hij heeft opnieuw de arrival of the ED. The ED, thanks for for coming. You have made my life easy later. <laughs> you did not present the critique. <laughs> but Dr. Fiobin just uh, indicated that we should be critique, we should rather strengthen. And uh, I, I think I'll stand by that request. Um, as a discussion, I I just felt that uh, I, I should not run to me into a, a moral dilemma of uh, uh, doing a long presentation, like uh, as if I'm the main speaker. I I I vow I could do that, but uh, I, I resist from doing that. Uh, the moderator did not give me time, but I'd like to take maybe ten minutes. You only have ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already used up two two minutes. <laughs> so now I'm only left with uh, eight minutes. I put together ten slides. I think the, the ten slides just to thank you for, for listening to me. But this was really a tough job. Um, when yeah, first uh, thank you also for the FES. I think this is the third time that I'm doing a uh, presentation to the to this forum. Uh, the, the, the important thing is uh, there is always differences. Uh, at the social security, we are like in academia, we have academic freedom. As I'm standing here, I'm not standing in for the EO, uh, so I'm standing in on my own behalf, so that's why there's a disclaimer. So if there are things that I'm saying here, please don't take them as social security issues. I would like already to start with that, and I'll end with that as well. So I was asked then to do a bit of an update uh, where are we standing just now? And I was just happy that uh, there is a, a consultative forum that Dr. mentioned that's coming out on the 27th of July, if I, if I, if I can correct it. So that is quite important. And just to start off, uh, in terms of uh, what, what uh, need to happen, uh, I'm sure that the slides are not, but they will be available for you. Uh, the, the doctor uh, took um, the, the healthcare component from the uh, WHO, and for, from us in social security, we have the ILO. These are all UN agencies, but they usually work, should work in a complementary fashion. That's why for us, we shouldn't come and confuse anybody when we talk about this. We're just talking to them from different directions. So there are three slides that I'll just spend my time on mostly. The others are just like a background, uh, like this one that I've carried on the slide, which is just showing that. Uh, about nearly 28 years ago, the Social Security Act was passed, and it provides for a provision of a national medical benefit fund. Yeah. So it's one of it. So 28 years ago. Yeah. So now I'm here to, to talk how far are we. But I'm not going to do it directly. You must just pick it up from the presentation. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll lose my job, and I would just want to retire without being fired. <laughs> there are no minimum standard convention, 102 of 1952. I also uh, stipulate medical care uh, as, as one of the the, 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 the the branches of social security, and that's why having it in the law in, uh, in the social security act is not a mistake. Uh, and it was also complemented by another convention, uh, number one thirty of uh, nineteen sixty nine, and uh, this uh, then defined the parameters under which social security have to implement uh, the, the these schemes. So the minister is the one to issue regulations. So the regulations are not yet issued because the fund was not created. So between uh, 2010 and 2014, uh, I would hastily uh, uh, point out that uh, Mr. Chepipo was uh, providing leadership during that. I hope uh, he's, he's not uh, really feeling bad that nothing has been done since he left, but we are, we are on, on the case. <laughs> and uh, we also received the support from the African uh, uh, Development Bank and then we conducted then with the assistant of Deloitte uh, the, the, the research that's necessary for us to implement the medical aid fund. So in 2014, that report was really released. And as I say, is that uh, uh, we, we have, okay, and then uh, eventually when we, the, the report was being uh, deliberated on, there was a need to create a committee, uh, sort of a, uh, an inter-ministerial plus also uh, incorporating various stakeholders. Uh, it's, it's still the case, and I, I was uh, just hoping that uh, one would have uh, uh, an indication as to what are the issues that the that, that committee is finding itself, but 
uh, from the reading and the updates, uh, they will definitely be able then to, to pick what are the issues. And I have summarized a couple of them in the slides that are just going to come. I'll just pick up one thing. Changes in leadership, both at SSC, at the Ministry of Labor, and the Ministry of Health and Social Services. It's also having its impact, especially on priority setting and strategy realignment. Uh, for the National Medical Benefit Fund. So the Medical Benefit Fund, I think, uh, I'll talk from the social security perspective. In 2016, we have a new board of directors where they prioritize and say, first do pension before we can then move on to medical. Uh, I think this year, early this year, there was a call uh, by one of the stakeholders who said, can any, uh, can every employed person just pay $50 so that they can have medical? And it was, oh, oh, it's a lot of why. Why, why, why pay, why pay? And when you mention social security, they want to rob us again and all those, those stories are coming up. Uh, luckily, uh, it looked like it, it didn't uh, take, take much cause. It died out because other things came in. And the impact of COVID uh, also happened in its impact. Because what was supposed to be done in prioritize on patient, by the, the 2019, I think there was a policy position prepared, and then it went to the ministry, and then uh, we're then uh, hoping that in, in the next two years, we'll make progress. So that progress was delayed because of the COVID impact. We, we, sometimes if we don't do anything, we can just uh, blame COVID. I think this is uh, the situation that I see. Now, in terms of the initial recommendation, the, the, the uh, clarity on policy direction that we require to focus on future work, the issue of financing mechanism was supposed to be uh, agreed upon. Uh, the tax versus direct contribution from payroll or a combination of both, those issues are not yet uh, agreed upon. What subsidy is affordable and it's also depending on the membership base, who is covered by the scheme. Target membership base, uh, the Act defines that, uh, that base specifically as employed uncovered people. And I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, that, that means uh, the uncovered uh, lives refer to the lives who are not currently members of the medical aid scheme. I'm sure that uh, uh, Stephen is watching. Uh, what, are, what are the impact? <laughs> uh, and then uh, the issue is. Well, will this then be expanded to say, okay, uh, we, 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 we need to look at the, maybe a different scenario in terms of who can be the members and who can be included. And that is quite a political and a very contentious matter. The target the membership then uh, uh, should have what benefit package will be offered. We know the presentation from the doctor was highlighting what the state is able to do and who's benefiting from it. And then we are also looking at multiple options that are available based on the MNR. South Africa and Namibia usually have the same scenario in terms of providing of medical aid benefits. Uh, the big, oh, if the elephant is ever small, the big elephant in the room is CMAS. How do we deal with CMAS? And it looks like, the, um, how do I put it? There is already an expectation that CMAS will be left untouched as, as a start, I, I, there are reasons for not for doing so uh, or not doing otherwise. But these are issues that we have to debate. But if we look at uh, the implication in terms of then, what are the uh, uh, splitting of tax paying population that I talk? We have uh, the covered, uh, the, the covered that uh, with CMAS is about 24 percent. This is now of the tax paying population. We are not talking about the Namibian population with a 2.6 million or something like that. We are talking about tax pay population. Uh, and and uh, we have here, in, because this, this report was uh, created for the, for the Social Security Commission so that we can look at what are the uh, possible financial implications. Uh, in terms of uh, tax law, I think there, are a threshold, there is a threshold as to when people will start paying tax. And uh, we are looking at all people who are employed gainfully employed, this is now the people who can then contribute. CEMAS is having, uh, this was now in 2014, so things might have changed here and there, a, a percentage up or down or whatever, I'm not too much for that about it, but we just give a structure as to how do we split then this animal that we call insurance, definitely, that is the mandate of the ministry and how it impacts, those are the discussions that we have to go through. 
Although uh, Namibia has not yet ratified uh, any of these ILO conventions that I mentioned above, so there is a need to make sure that if you intend to ratify, then you need to, uh, to, to design a scheme that will, be, that will enable you to ratify. Uh, and in terms then of uh, policy issues that are remaining, uh, the benefit provision, we have to look at the public versus private. I think Dr. covered it so well. But then the whole thing is how the funds will be channeled. Be it now to the uh, public sector, from the private, or from those who are not covered. Because currently they are covered, they come, and then they are like state patients. And then this is a scenario where we are saying, if you are employed, then you should be able to at least contribute to the medical aid. I'll not go through all those. And there are also uh, that uh, legislative and administrative consideration. Uh, one of it is then that exemption, the exemption clause to say, though, if you are already belonging to a, 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 an approved medical aid fund, approved by the Minister under the Recommendation of the Commission, Section 20, uh, Subsection 1, you can be exempted. And then we have also then to look at the capacity of the SSC to run a complex fund like medical. Sometimes uh, we, we, we get comments like, do the, the people or does SSC have people qualified enough to run this fund? They must look at the medical aid, how they are running. It's not a, it's, it's not a simple thing. I agree with them. But then we have to look at the, 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 the consideration in terms of what the mandate of social security should be. And I focus social health insurance as opposed to national health uh, insurance. And the difference, I'll show them and demonstrate them in, in, in a moment. And we also then need to look at the regional approaches. Uh, E.g. South Africa has developed the white paper on, on, on uh, national health, and it's still being debated. I'm following the discussion because uh, uh, having been in South Africa for some, some time, it's a very interesting. So I'll, I'll come, I'll move closer to the end because, as I said, I think these are slides just to maybe entice the debate, and, and then we can look at what, what should happen. We have to look at what can we do in the short term. In the short term, we then need to look at uh, what benefit package should be included, but hospitalization, including private hospitalization, should be included. This is a high cost component to the medical aid. And then we have to face in the day-to-day -day benefits. Uh, the, the Ministry of, not finance, but health, then they have to uh, uh, upscale the quality of health care. Sorry, I'll, I'll definitely amend that one. And then we can then add, uh, how are we going to deal with the informal employees if they have to be included? This is, these are the things that we need to do in the current environment. In the medium term, medium term we need then to look at uh, making sure that the benefit package is uh, increased, and then we can then uh, in, uh, define various uh, options, no longer just a standard package of care, and then we can then bring in uh, CMS. Uh, when CMS is, is brought in, then we'll fulfill the issue of social health insurance. When they are out, we are only doing an interim uh, funding of NMDF. In the long term, we then have to include uh, the unemployed lives. This is not for the SSC. This must then be the Ministry of Health that is providing. And eventually, then the benefit of the NHI will be realized. Then we have the situation like in the UK. I don't know whether in, in, in the US, in, uh, Obamacare and uh, Medicare, this is something that we can look at. I like these slides because what is, what is showing, you simply, uh, on your left hand, you have a short term that I just described. You have the uncovered who should be brought in, but then uh, same as were being excluded. And then we have just a, a medical scheme, uh, which then is NMDF, but without SEMAS, it's not full. When you go to medium term, that is where we can then bring in the informal employees and then SEMAS, then we have a social health insurance. Social health insurance is a contributory and is for those people who are employed. Unfortunately, it's not covering the unemployed, and that is the dilemma. So that unemployed is then for the long-term national health insurance. So all lives, including the unemployed. So if we want to do to start now from the long term, coming to the short term, that is where the dilemma is. Should focus on social health insurance in the medium term, three to five years, because we have already lost ground in terms of COVID, 
and then they expanded the role of the Ministry of Health and Social Services in the design of uh, NHI should be allowed to continue. They shouldn't be saying, no, we are waiting for social security to come. And the cooperation between private and healthcare providers, this is a, a must. There is no way that one would uh, live without the other. I think in the next speaker is an economist. Uh, there is no economist with one hand. They say on the other hand. Also, <laughs> the, the legal mandate and policy option need to be clarified. I have mentioned the minute talk. And then strong commitment on leadership. Both it is SSC and uh, United, uh, Universal Healthcare uh, the Advisory Council. Those need to come out if we have them to clarify the role. And then financial sustainability. Uh, there was an, uh, 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 a study done on actuarial modeling for what for all this, uh, this uh, scheme to do. I've excluded them because uh, as a discussion, I do not want to go in detail. But finally, and important, the issue of solidarity, social solidarity should be a fundamental issue in social protection. And this is where the mandate of SSC cannot be underestimated because that is to enforce social uh, solidarity. I thank you very much. And the disclaimers there, views expressed in this presentation are those of the author and not necessarily of the employer. Thank you so much.